today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the controversial opinions that Michael Burry has talked about on the subject of the very notable cryptocurrency Bitcoin. So as you probably already know, Michael Burry is the person who did a time the 2008 housing crisis perfectly. He shorted the market and made a huge fortune for him and his investors. However, when Michael Burry makes predictions, people usually take these predictions very seriously because they have been right so far. For example, he successfully shorted Tesla and so far his latest prediction is one on Bitcoin. Now, what has Michael Burry said on Bitcoin and what is his stance that has got the crypto community talking? So this is what he said very recently. He actually suggested that there's some major issues from Bitcoin that I think everyone who is invested in Bitcoin should take account of. So this is what he said in a tweet. So he says, Legally violent, heartless centralized governments with a lifeblood interest in monopolies on currencies won't allow Bitcoin to thrive and remain decentralized in the long term. This is a statement that is actually very true. And to be honest, many have dismissed this statement as someone who doesn't truly understand the cryptocurrency community, but as someone that understands the wider economy and how things are all intertwined, what Michael Burry is saying is indicative of a real big problem. And essentially the problem that Bitcoin aims to solve by being decentralized. Now, what you need to understand, the long story short of what he's basically saying is that sure, Bitcoin is decentralized, but these greedy governments aren't going to allow themselves to lose control over the fiat system. It just won't happen. And if it does happen, it's going to happen in an interesting way. Now, an interesting another tweet from Burry is that he also said, people say I didn't warn last time. And he says, I did, but no one listened. So I warned this time and still no one listens, but I will have proof I warned. Now, why I think this tweet and this entire debate is actually very interesting is because I actually think Burry is right when it comes to this aspect. You have to understand that governments and world governments aren't going to lose control of the monetary system. That's what makes the world go round and that's how very powerful people stay in power and they aren't going to lose this. So we need to take a look at what are some real world scenarios and real world implications of Bitcoin losing its decentralization. Now, of course, Bitcoin can't really lose it, but there are some scenarios and there are some things happening in the world which show us that the future of Bitcoin may not be as bright as we think. Now, bear in mind that this video is talking about Bitcoin, not cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is every coin and the entire, you know, blockchain, but Bitcoin is the one currency that is the most popular. I just want to make that point because it's very easy to get confused. So with Bitcoin, we've seen some recent introductions to laws and legislations around the world. If you've been paying attention, you'll know that recently there were some bans of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin around the world. So let's take a look at what's actually been going on around the world and how it could kind of show what's going on in the future. So if we take a look at this article, we can see that it states India to ban ownership of cryptocurrencies. And there's about 8 million Indians have invested in cryptocurrencies. And this is very interesting because this is something that we are going to see happen more and more in the future as the governments start to realize what cryptocurrency is actually capable of. An entire decentralized system where people actually have the power once again. So it says the Indian government seeks to propose a law banning cryptocurrencies under which anyone involved in its trading or holding assets could be fined according to reports. And this is not the only country. And you have to understand that India is a really, really large place. They've got over a billion people and this is a really, really diverse and growing economy. And this is not the only place where there's been some sort of cryptocurrency ban slash legal ramifications for the cryptocurrency popularity increase. We can look at this article right here, which says Nigeria's crypto ban fuels mistrust in government. And as you can see over here, it also states that Nigeria has basically banned cryptocurrency and there has been some bans with Bitcoin, which is pretty interesting because if we look at the United States of America, I'm pretty sure that's where the majority of you guys are watching this video from, banning cryptocurrency or even Bitcoin in that case 
has actually been discussed in Congress. And we're going to take a look at exactly what they said, because I feel that this is what Michael Burry is talking about. However, there's two sides to the coin. So let's take a look at what it says. So this article right here on Forbes, and this was in 2019, states US lawmakers are realizing they can't ban Bitcoin. And this is quite true. It says, those who have been a long time critics of Bitcoin usually have one key theory in common, which is that governments will eventually ban Bitcoin and cryptocurrency will then cease to exist in any meaningful form. And there's different points of view. That said, implementing a ban is no easy task. After all, Bitcoin was built by cyberpunks as a form of digital money that would be affected by the desires of politicians and regulators around the world. And this is the point. People can't truly ban Bitcoin. You have to understand that Bitcoin is in its entirety decentralized, meaning no one can control it. And realistically, you don't need to be online to own Bitcoin. You can just own it on a hard wallet, meaning that there's not really a way that governments can really sort of track and trace this coin. So as you could sa can see right here, it states if the United States were to decide, and I'm not saying that should, if the United States were to decide we don't want cryptocurrency to happen in the United States and try to ban it, I'm pretty confident we couldn't succeed in doing that because this is a global innovation. It goes on further to say, I think the challenge we all face with this is some of the cryptocurrencies that they're literally just a piece of open software. That's what I said exactly. It's nothing else. It just exists on the internet. It runs wherever it runs and there's no real regulations that can be applied to this stuff. Now, take a look at this video where there's a congressman who's actually calling to ban Bitcoin, although it's probably near impossible to happen. He basically states that he wants to ban Bitcoin because, like we said before, this is how people get their power. The United States has its power because of its monetary system and Bitcoin is sort of challenging that. So this is something that's interesting and we should take a look. I look for colleagues to join with me in introducing a bill to uh, outlaw cryptocurrency uh, uh, owner uh, purchases by Americans so that we nip this in the bud in part because not uh, an awful lot of our international power comes from the fact that the dollar is the standard unit of international uh, finance and transactions clearing through the New York Fed is critical for major oil, oil and other transactions and it is the announced purpose of the supporters of cryptocurrency to take that power away from us, to put us in a position where the most significant sanctions we have on Iran, for example, would become uh, irrelevant. So whether it is to disempower our foreign policy, our tax collection uh, enforcement, or our law, traditional law enforcement, the purposes of cryptocurrency, the advantage it has over uh, uh, sovereign currency is solely uh, to aid in the disempowerment of, uh, of uh, the United States and the rule of law. So as you can see here, this video kind of shows why the US government won't really be bullish on Bitcoin. However, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because if major corporations actually start adopting Bitcoin, such as Tesla recently purchasing $1.5 billion, which is now worth quite a lot more. So as you could see from the video, we could see that this is something that the US government and other governments are looking to possibly ban in the future. And you have to understand that these countries and these regulations really aren't going to lose their power when it comes to losing something that could be the new world monetary system. I don't think the US government is going to just stand back and and simply watch Bitcoin take over the entire money system. I'm pretty sure there will be some new kind of digital currency that will be there in the future, which is already being discussed. But the comment I have to ask you is, do you think Michael Burry is right about Bitcoin? He also goes on to say that Bitcoin is a speculative bubble and does say a crash is coming. He says here, Bitcoin is a speculative bubble that poses more risk than opportunity, despite most of the proponents being correct in their argument for why it is relevant at this point in history. So he says, if you do not know how much leverage is involved in the run up, you may not know enough to own it. So do you think Michael Burry is right about this Bitcoin bubble? And do you think he's right about a Bitcoin crash? I personally don't think Bitcoin is in a bubble right now. I do think maybe Bitcoin is on the path of its actual four year cycle. I do think the prices are probably correct right now, but I do know that the prices may spike and most certainly go down quite a bit in the future as it hops out of the media spotlight once again. So 
It's interesting to see controversial opinions on a cryptocurrency where some are bullish and some are bearish. Either way, Michael Burry's opinion is one not to be taken lightly because he's someone who has accurately predicted the past accurately.